Saunders here, Nick Portello. We are Combat Insiders. Uh, special guest with us via Skype. The man, Shannon the Cannon Rich. Uh, he's got a fight coming up with Travis Ironman Fulton, April 4th. It's on a Thursday, so mark your calendars. Uh, it's going to be on UFC Fight Pass. And, uh, man, Shannon, what's going on, man? I oh, man, just got done training, you know. I'm out here in uh, sunny Arizona. Nice yeah. and sunny, 80 degrees. Playing golf, you know, relaxing, waiting to uh, waiting to go to war. It's a it's a nice warm uh, forty degrees I think where I'm at so a nice uh, nice toast. It's like thirty here so don't worry. This fight has been like you said it's been years in the making years in the making right. the Cannon versus the Iron Man you know why now man why now the Cannon versus the Iron Man why now why not why didn't why didn't this happen ten, well, long ten years ago, ago? You know, I was a skinny guy I was fighting at one fifty five then I was fighting at seventy. Then I fought at 85. Then I fought at 205. Now I'm heavyweight. You know, I'm an old man. I don't want to cut weight no more. I'm fat and lazy. So now I'm uh, now I'm fighting the big boys. Well, Travis Fulton, he's a big boy. So uh, now 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 we're in the same spot. So uh, you know, it is what it is. I'm gonna, gonna throw down with the Iron Man. I feel like this fight is picking up so much traction because of the the history behind it. And and I've said it a million, times, but. It's not possible for this to happen again, the way the no. rules are now. No, I there's, mean, no you guys... in the world. there's no one in the world that has as many fights as me and Travis Fulton. So, uh, you know, when he, when but got there's that not many... even anybody close. Nah, nobody's there's... even close, man. We, we got a lot of fights. You know, we were fighting, you know, I, I've been fighting for 27 years, three, four, five times a week sometimes. You know, you go fight on a Friday. Sometimes you can get three fights in on a Friday, turn around and go fight three or four times on a Saturday. So, you know, you fight Tra seven times in a weekend. that you, you They add up quick. Travis kind of touched on it, and you were, I guess this was your era, too. He said you would go to fight somewhere, and you might, you don't know. It's Everything was a tournament style, and uh, the rules tournament. changed from venue yeah. to venue. Yeah. Yeah. So when we first started, there were no rules, no rounds, no weight classes. So, I mean, it was, is what it is. I don't know. Josh, we're in the midst of history right here. I, I really do, and I know I don't want to sound like a broken record. I really don't. But like Nick said, I really think, man, this is it's picking up a lot of steam. I mean, how can you not? You got to recognize that. You got to recognize the number one and number two most fights. Like I said, it's never going to happen again. This isn't no. something. This is you know one of those overused uh, overused cliches, right, Shane? I'm sure you've heard it a thousand times when someone promotes a fight, or you know, this is uh, biggest fight ever, biggest this ever, best this ever. But I mean, like, this is really one of those moments to where history in the making. Yeah, it really is, and it you know really that is. that phrase is used a lot. But this really is history in the making. It will never, ever, ever, ever happen again. This is it. Unless we fight again. <laughs> Unless you fight again, yeah. and that, that's the only thing that's gonna, you know, that's the only right. thing that's gonna do that. Um, yeah. Plus, wait, this guy, he wait, he he won. He beat some undefeated ten-year jujitsu guy. Then he went and fought in bare knuckle. This is like a month later, and he's fighting again. Dude, you don't slow down. You you. Don't wait. I'm the, I'm what you call the ultimate athlete. Okay, I truly am. I'm the ultimate athlete. I do it all, man. Brazilian jiu jitsu, Muay Thai, kickboxing. Um, hell, man, I'll do checkers. It doesn't matter. Chess, marbles. I golf. I do, I do it all, bro. <laughs> It's amazing how you go, and I remember I asked you this. How do you go from a sunny day on the golf course to that night punching somebody in the face? If you have, It's just unreal how you flip the switch. It's just, you know, it's just do what you do, man, and this is what I do. I've been doing it for so long that it's, uh, it's time to clock in, you know. That's it. That's my job. I'm willing to challenge them in checkers only. That's it. Shannon, uh... I guess sidebar conversation here because me and Nick were talking about this earlier. UFC 235 just happened, right? Oh, John, absolutely. John Jones, Anthony Smith, and then uh, the co-main uh, Woodley and uh, Usman. I guess uh, give us your thoughts. I'm curious to hear your thoughts to kind of maybe even your breakdown. Usman and uh, Woodley first. What did you think about that fight, and who were you expecting the to win going into that? I, I knew that that they're both tough guys, and and Woodley, man, Tyrone is such a stud, man. But to me, I think he just, uh, he had an off night. You know, he even said it at the after uh, fight, post-fight post conferences. He just had an off night. And, yeah. and you know, some nights you're just not on. You know, you're, you're, you're missing gears. 
And when you fight Usman, dude, you better be on all cylinders because that guy is coming like a freight train. And I, he just ran him over, man. He put on a clinic. And uh, at that night, I mean, that night, um, he was the best. He, he, he really was. He was the best. And uh, tough, tough guy. Um, my, my friend, man, God, I don't know what happened to Smith, man. He just didn't come to fight. I think he got awestruck. I think he got starstruck when he saw John Jones across from him. Um, and you know that happens. You know we're we're fighters, but sometimes when we see superstars, uh, you you do get awestruck, man. You're like you're in the ring, and you know it happened to me when I fought Sakuraba. Um, you, you you get a little awestruck, you know, starstruck, and you, you just don't fight the way you should be fighting. I don't think Smith. Uh, I don't think Smith fought to his potential. Um, and I and everybody's giving Herb Dean a, a, a rash of shit because he stopped the fight too early. Um, I think he stopped the fight perfectly because I think. Um, Robbie Lawler was out. His hand mm. was down. His hand was out, dude. He, he he was out at that time. And when Ben let let go of the choke, he woke right back up. So, you know, it's a split second decision. I think Herb <laughs> Dean did a great job. He you know, hey, you can say what you want. I think he did a great job. Shannon, you know what? Expand on that because someone with your expertise and you know your years of experience with that. So that that bulldog choke, it wasn't across the neck, but it was across the jawline, right? Yes. H how? I guess explain maybe more in detail. How does that well, hold work? You got work? the shoulder. You go. You got the shoulder across the cardiac artery, and you got the other, others right here uh -huh. on this other one. And when you're squeezing, bro, you know it could be on your jaw. It doesn't matter. It's gonna put you out. You're gonna go to sleep. One of his cardiac arteries was out. You know it was touched, and uh, it was so hard. I mean, Ashkin is a strong guy, and he squeezed the shit out of him, man, and he was out. His hand went limp. I, I well, think me, I, don't, I don't care, man. Your hand goes up and it goes down. It's limp. You're out. Yeah, that's what we and were saying. I, I think the part that a lot of people are, they are, they can't grasp is because it wasn't on the neck. They're saying, oh, he wasn't out. It matter. wasn't on the neck. No, no, it doesn't matter. That's yeah. That's what we thought. I, I didn't think he it really mattered. Head, he squeezed his head so hard he 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 was out. He passed out. Um, when he released, he, he woke right back up. But at yeah. that point in time, that split second, he was out. And I think Herb Dean did a great job, and I think everyone needs to get off his ass. Speaking of, <laughs> did you guys hear uh, Joe Rogan say some good stuff about Shannon the Cannon? Oh, well, you know what? We were we were going to talk about that, and <laughs> I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. Uh, I, Joe Rogan was actually pretty cool about it. His dude, Joe Rogan's a man, dude. I, I really like Joe Rogan. He's, he's a little out there. Um, smokes a little dope, and you know he's out there and talks about monkeys and space and stuff like. Hey, I like the guy. I think he's a cool guy. I think he's a great comedian. But uh, his sidekick Brendan Schraub, that guy is an uh, that guy's an idiot. He he literally said, Shannon Rich has the worst record I've ever seen. I heard worst that worst record. Come on, bro. He's he. The, we're talking from a guy who's ten and five. To me, that's still an amateur. The guy, you know, I fought more times in one year than he ever fought in his whole career. So Brendan Schraub needs to Google me. And I, I literally put that on the on the Twitter. I said, Google me, bitch. I mean, go out there and Google me, bro. I mean, not only do I do MMA, but I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, black belt, third degree black belt, and world champion. And I'm 26 and three, 26 wins by knockout in bare knuckle boxing, pro boxing as well. Bro, I don't just do MMA, but I have fought a shit ton. And to say that I have the worst record, I think that was insulting, man. He just, you know, he insulted me and it kind of struck a nerve because... You know, I've been doing this a long time, and I think you got to give the elders the respect, you know? I think his issue with that, not his issue with that, but... He just doesn't comment. Know. I think he just doesn't well, to, know. To I comment think. on somebody's record, you have to do a little bit of digging. And from our digging, and you can confirm this, there's a lot on your record that's missing. That's well, look, not man, there. From, from 1991 to 1998, all of my fights are not there recorded. Because there was no such thing as something called the fucking internet. We don't have right. the internet. You know, 1991, there was no internet. Um, now there's internet. So, you know, dude, there's over 50, 60 of my fights missing, gone. Never never found. But I still fought them. I still fought those fights, and, and I don't care. The sure dog can have my record at 58 and 85 or whatever it is. I mean, they, they can have that. That's cool. I know what I've done. I don't got to prove it to nobody. You know, there's a lot of guys like Travis Fulton who've been out there, no, and and have been there when I fought the underground. Dan Codwell from UFC. I mean, not UFC. Tap out. He was in Vinner Tap out with Charles uh, Mask. Um, they were in the underground shows. They saw me fight. I mean, there's a lot of guys that saw me fight in the early days. Um, you know, I don't care, dude. But Brendan Schwab needs to do some research, man. Really, you don't, you don't, you don't take a veteran like myself and say, "Hey, Joe Rogan, that's the worst." record i've ever seen 
man. Shannon, yeah. here, here's here's what I want to know: Can Brendan Schaub get a piece of the cannon? Hey, man, if he wants one, I, I never I've never ducked anybody, dude. Anyone, anywhere, anytime, man. Bare knuckle MMA doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, dude. Anything. I don't care. So, so not to look past your opponent again, because you guys together, it's just an awesome thing. But what? I mean, I know one of your answers. But what? Do, what is the future? Um, is there anybody left you want to fight? We know you want to fight Bobby Gunn. We know that. You you've been perfectly clear about that. Is there anybody else on the radar, or is that World Diamond Belt in view? No, that's in view, man, and, and we'll see what happens. You know, I, I, I'd like to fight Gunn, but, um, you know, it's, right now it's just one fight at a time. It's one day at a time, and that's what I do. You know, I'm 48 years old, dude. I got nothing to prove anymore. Yeah. Um, before, it was a long time ago, I used to have to try to prove myself. I, I don't prove myself anymore. I own a gym. Um, you know, I'm very, I'm very, uh, I'm successful in my gym. I got successful students, um, and I got a great wife. Um, I mean, I got some beautiful cars. I, I, I live in a great home. I, I got nothing to prove, man. I'm living life. I'm, you know, I'm traveling around the world. Uh, I'm doing my thing. I got, I got some big things coming up that I'll release later on. But, um, you know, but life is good. So I got nothing to prove. And you definitely have oh, a yeah. car with your face on the side of it. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen this. I've seen this car. Ta- I'm a little jealous. Shannon, I asked Travis the same question. I guess. When, when, when the smoke is cleared, you know, and everything's all said and done, what do you want, what, what is Shannon the Cannon's legacy when it's all said and done and you ride off into the sunset? I mean, honestly, I just, I, you know, I'm not going to go down in the rule books of a guy who, or in the history books of a guy who was the best MMA fighter in the world, the best bare knuckle boxer, the best kickboxer, the best jujitsu guy, because I'm not, I'm not the best. But I want to be known as a guy who never backed down from anybody. He would have took a fight on a short notice. Uh, Shannon Rich was the type of guy that, um, you know, anyone, anywhere, anytime, it didn't matter, weight class, nothing. He just stepped up. He never ducked anybody. I want to be known as the guy that, you know, hey, man, if, if there's a fight, Shannon Rich would will, will step up and fight. He, he wasn't scared of nobody. I've never turned down a fight. I mean, I, I took fights against Diego Sanchez, Evan Tanner, Sakuraba, uh, Frank Shamrock. I mean, you name it. I've, I've took fights on short notice. Um, was I smart about it? No, absolutely not. But, you know, during that time, dude, I was taking a fight, making money, and and moving to the next one. So, I mean, I was I was fighting every weekend, somewhere, somebody. It didn't matter to me. So, uh, you know, it isn't and like somewhere. Nowadays. Yeah, like, somewhere. like nowadays. Where have you nowadays, fought in the world? I fought everywhere, man. You know, but, but the thing is now people have fight camps, seven, eight weeks, three, four months to train for one guy. And, uh, you know, back in the day it wasn't like that, man. You might get a phone call, six-hour notice, five-hour <laughs> notice, one-day notice. What? And that's what I did, man. I, I I took fights like that all the time. I was the guy, man. Literally, I saved promotions because they had a main event, fallout. They'd call me, Shannon, hey, do you want to fight this guy? Of course, what are you paying? All right, I'll be there. And I'd show up and fight, you know? That's just how it went. Wow. Wait a minute. You've taken a fight on five hours notice? There was a guy by the name of um, Wes Combs. You Google him and look him up. Wes Combs is a big fucking guy. Um, I get a phone call from a guy by the name of Aaron Brink. He calls me up at like, I don't know, 11 in the morning, I guess. He says, hey, we have a fight tonight in San Diego. Can you come? Oh, no, L.A., sorry. And I'm in Phoenix. Can you come out here? So I literally grabbed Brian Pardo. We jumped in the car. We drove to California. Six-hour drive. Literally, I'm getting out of the car as they're announcing my name. So I put my gloves on, put my fight what? shorts on, jumped in the ring. I didn't warm up anything. I didn't even wrap my hands. Put my mouthpiece in, got out there, fought <laughs> West Holmes, got my ass kicked, went over, got my check, and then drove back home. It, I was literally in the venue for maybe 15 minutes total. And that's during the fight. The fight only lasted like a minute. He beat the shit out of me. That guy was tough. I want you to Google West Holmes. He's a tough dude, man. <laughs> I, I'm speechless. That's just one. That's just one <laughs> example. Hey, ask Travis Fulton this one. Travis gives me a call in the morning. He says, hey, can you go to Amsterdam? I said... Yeah, I can fight in Amsterdam. Why? What's going on? He says, hey, man, go to the airport. We got a ticket for you. You're going to fight this guy from Brazil. I said, okay, cool. I'll meet you in Amsterdam. Travis doesn't even get on the plane, misses the plane. So I'm on the plane by myself, flying to Amsterdam all alone. I don't know who I'm fighting. I don't know who's picking me up. I don't know the. I don't know nothing. I don't even know how much I'm getting paid. Get to the, the weigh-ins. We weigh in. I don't see my opponent. I still don't see my opponent. The next day comes, and they announce the fight, and then they go, 
and former world champion, Kakareko. Dude, this guy from Brazil is named Kakareko. Alexander Kakareko Ferreira. Kakareko is one of the baddest no holds barred Valley Tudo bare knuckle fighter on the planet. And I did really well with him, and then he beat my ass too. But I mean, yeah, I took that fight on like six hour notice. It just, I mean, that's what we do. Can you go to Amsterdam? I did, I did. I'm not the smartest guy. I didn't take the fights like I should have taken them. But, you know, yeah, well, I go to Amsterdam. I've never been to Amsterdam. Let's go. That's nice. This is insane. I don't have a, I can't. I don't have anything else. I can't. You need to really sit down one day, and you should just do a memoir series. Yeah. Like, oh, that'd be fun. All, all, all the wild shit that you Oh, I've done. seen like, crazy shit, man. I'm telling you. That's another reason to uh, check out their fight. The Cannon versus the Iron Man, April 4th. And, uh, like, again, UFC Fight Pass, M1 Global. Check it out. And uh, th- these two guys are savages. They are veterans of the sport. They're nev- they will, there will never be another Shannon the Cannon. There will never be another Travis Iron Man Fulton. This is the super fight. This, this is, is super the fight. super fight of super fights. This is the super fights. Absolutely. Facts. Please go check Facts. it out. That's all we got for you today for Nick Portella, for Josh Furs. That's the cannon over there, and we're Combat Insiders, and we're out.